Chipotle says it's being forced to disappoint pork lovers all across the country. The change January 14th was a very bad day for fans of the Chipotle carnita. That's when the company announced they discovered that one of their major pork suppliers had failed to meet their animal treatment standards. The result? Pork pulled from the menu indefinitely in many locations. You guys feeling all right? While music is the main attraction at these Cultivate festivals, staged around the country by Chipotle, there are also plenty of reminders around the grounds of, among other things, the company's commitment to the concept of responsibly raised pork. We understood there was a risk. I mean, you're taking something out of your restaurants that people like, instead of there being outrage that people couldn't get carnitas in, in some of our restaurants. The response has really largely been kudos for walking the talk and for standing on, on principle. And it's not just Chipotle. McDonald's has also taken a strong stance on the way meat in its supply chain must be handled. Even industry giants like Smithfield Foods and Tyson have committed by 2017 to end the practice of keeping pigs in gestation crates that severely limit their mobility. It takes time for large companies to institute change, but having heard the demand for transparency, small businesses like this one in Kansas City's East Bottoms are answering with a personal touch. People want that relationship with whatever the product is. It doesn't have to be meat. They, they want a relationship with the people that are providing them those goods and services. And so that's what we're here for. So you're going to take your knife, you're going to cut right in. Weekly classes at the local pig bring customers one step closer to some firsthand knowledge. All you need to do is this one's centered on sustainability, exploring ways to use the whole hog. <laughs> This is wonderful. I mean, I'm not going to be able to go home and do this, um, but I at least have an understanding of how it works. It's more finesse than a lot of people think it is. It's kind of enlightening how much care you have to take as you're butchering it. For this small shop, local means animals raised without antibiotics within 100 miles of Kansas City. That small scale also makes it easier to maintain an ongoing dialogue with their suppliers. For meat to have a future in the average person's diet, people are going to have to eat less of it. And because they're eating less of it, they're going to be even more focused on, if I'm eating less, I'm definitely going to up the quality of the meat that I'm eating. Caring enough to pay a little more is what Heart Brand Beef is counting on from consumers. This ranch near Austin, Texas, has been raising Akaushi cattle since 1994, when a specially equipped 747 brought eight cows and three bulls across the Pacific. All the cattle that we're seeing here today are direct descendants of the Akaushi from Japan. And we take the full blood Akaushi bulls and put them on regular uh, commercial or domestic cattle, and, and even with that 50% Akaushi, still able to produce really great, delicious beef. Flavor is, of course, highly subjective. But as a breed, Akaushi excel at producing intramuscular fat, i.e. marbling, which usually correlates with high-end eating. Bill Fielding, who'd spent his career working for companies like Cargill and Farmland, was skeptical at first. But this experience with small meat has changed his tune. We've got now six years of history which show crossing Akushi bulls with any other cows. On average, we, we come up with 30, 35% prime. Consistency, quality, and taste, the consumer has always said that's what they want, and the industry has not responded. The consumer wants to know where his beef came from, so we do not buy our cattle randomly. Uh, everything we buy is sourced from a specific ranch uh, and also sourced from a specific Akushi bull. What we're doing is, is darn sure different. Uh, we're not just another seed stock operation with another breed that you see on the side of the road. We're different, but I say for all the right reasons. For Heartbrand, finding the right size niche in an industry dominated by a handful of giants won't be easy. Capital costs are huge, and resistance to change is ingrained. But according to Fielding, this time, the right elements are in place. I wish I was still running one of the big companies because knowing what I know now, I would absolutely put top priority behind this program and getting these genetics out.